the biggest, the largest, the highest, the greatest, the tallest, the mightiest African spiritual platform. Don't forget, I am Queen Hadassah. I am Empress Makida. I am the world star number eight. I am the spear of destiny. I am African liberation and I am African spirituality. I welcome you to one great, great, great episode today. No long talk. The only Prabhu does, that has my own name attached to his name, his grace. I am grace, so you don't have to forget that. <laughs> but the name, these names, I won't try to mention them. I won't even try. They will mention their own name. I can only mention Shakshu's das, Asa. The rest, I can't. Let's welcome Papa. He's not old. Um, he's one of our fathers who will be visiting us frequently whenever he's in Ghana and there is time we would extract knowledge from him. So let's welcome um, our father. Father, we welcome you. Thank you. We've uh, missed you. We are happy to be here again. <laughs> so say hello to the people you know. Yes, uh, dear viewers, thank you for watching. We are grateful to share this knowledge with all of you. As you know, my name is Srivas Das. I am, uh, okay, I am the uh, zonal supervisor for the Hare Krishna movement in West Africa. I also serve as a spiritual master and um, I'm a teacher at our many institutions across the world. And I serve on many international committees for the society. And so we are happy to be here to share this knowledge, which is very valuable for everyone. In fact, knowledge is required for everyone. It is said that just as medicine is a friend of the sick, knowledge is a friend of a person on a journey. Hmm. We are all on a spiritual journey to the spiritual world. And so this knowledge is very important. It's very, very important. Papa, we welcome you and we appreciate your presence on this platform. Ebusia, the man crank rebia kwaba na and then your first time our platform is an episode as they say. We are still the biggest, we are still the largest, uh, we are the mother of all spiritual platform, all other platforms are behind us. We make a move, we create, we do things, and they copy and they paste. We are happy and we are so proud. But in all, we are the mother of all spiritual platform. I welcome you once again. Today's topic, I am in a hurry to get into today's topic because the topic is this. Is there a place called heaven or hell? If so, why does God have to create hell for some of his own children to suffer. What are the qualifications for going? That is what I want to know. The qualifications. I would want to know, but I will still ask him questions. I welcome you. And Papa, I welcome you. Thank you. Is there any, any comment or anything about your previous episode you would want to address today? Well, um, a number of people have called me to appreciate the knowledge we shared on this platform. Uh, we talked about the identity of the soul. Who am I? Where do I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going from here? These are very essential knowledge that every living entity must have. In fact, this knowledge differentiates the human being from the animal. Animals don't go to school. They don't. Animals don't go to church. They don't pursue spiritual knowledge. So if we are human beings and we don't pursue spiritual knowledge, we have no spiritual inclination and we're just eating, sleeping, mating, and defending, we are simply acting on the animal platform. Hmm. Yes, a human being must pursue knowledge, spiritual knowledge, to identify who am I, why am I here, and where am I going. That differentiates us from the animals. We are blessed with such highly developed consciousness, highly developed intelligence. What is it meant for? It's meant for understanding our identity. Hmm. Ahambra Masmi means I am a spiritual being. 
I don't belong to this world. I am a stranger here. And we all have to leave. Hmm. That is a fact. We are all strangers in this world, and we have to leave. So an intelligent person will make the necessary arrangement, will make the necessary, um, take the necessary steps in order to go back to where we belong. So we spoke about some of these things in our previous discussions, and people have called to register the appreciation, and we are always ready to share more. Thank you for coming. We appreciate such knowledge. You pay thousands of dollars to get through to such knowledge, but we give it to you for free on this very platform. It tells how much we love you and how much we care about your consciousness and, in fact, how much we care about the soul living inside of your jacket or the car. I welcome you once again. Today's topic is very important to me, but I'm going to ask him a few questions before we get into the topic as usual. So, Father, my question is this. You are an African, and you are in Hare Krishna movement. I appreciate that. I don't have any problem with that. Your headquarters is in India. India. And in fact, a eh, lot of things... Uh, you people practice or use or your way of worship is basically, uh, you will say, an India culture. You are an African. Your knowledge, you speak on bigger platforms, higher platforms. My worry, I won't say my worry, my focus is Africa. How do we get this message through to our fellow Africans? Without this message, how would our behavior be and how bad is, is, is the behavior affecting the continent Africa? And if we should get this message through to each and every one of us, what will be the evidence and how would our continent be like? I know it's a huge topic, a yes, huge question. Yes, it is. It is a huge topic. But I will just highlight uh, some areas. Actually, um, the African continent is actually a part of the uh, planet. You see, it is said that long, long time ago, all the continents were together. There was one landmass. And the culture that we are presenting today was spread all over the landmass. What we practice is called Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma means eternal spiritual principles, eternal religious principles that are necessary for every human being. So when the planet or the landmass was one, this knowledge was all over this landmass. But as God would have it, it said there was some activities within the earth crust that created a separation of the continents. Uh, it is called the Teutonic Movement that caused the planet or the, 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 the continent to separate. And it is said that if you look at the, the map of the world, it's like a jigsaw. You can push the continents back together to form one landmass. And you can see Africa, the Horn of Africa enters somewhere. The it West will Africa fit in. fit in somewhere. You can see that actually at one point in history, there was one landmass. So this knowledge we are presenting today is actually a very, very ancient knowledge. Knowledge about the soul knowledge about the spiritual world, knowledge about heaven, knowledge about hell, 
knowledge about creation, structure of the universe. These are ancient knowledge that belong to the entire human society. But because of this tectonic movement of the earth crust that uh, divided the, the, the earth mass, and the knowledge was separated. Africa moved away with a certain amount of knowledge, just like America also moved away with a certain amount of knowledge, and Europe also different level of knowledge. So that totality of knowledge is still in India. The totality is still yes, in India. How? Yes, it's still there because the scriptures and the saints of olden times can still be found in India. There are saints who have been living for thousands of years. Shalavya Sadev, who uttered the scriptures, he has been living for the last 5,000 years. He's still alive in India. And people can meet him if you are qualified. Aswatama, a son of one very powerful Brahmana who has so much knowledge, he is still alive in India. And there are many people, they are called Chiranjivas. Chiranjiva means people who live very, very, very long periods of life. So Shalav Yasadev, he has been living 5,000 years ago. He's, he wrote on the scriptures, he is still living. Aswatama is still living. And many other personalities are still living. They all live in India, in the Himalayas region. They are there. And people who are qualified can meet them and gain knowledge. It is said that about 300 years ago, or maybe 500 years ago, one great saint, um, Madhvacharya, he wrote a scripture. And he wanted this Vyasadev, who wrote all the Vedic literatures, he wanted him to edit it and authorize it. So he went all the way up to the Himalayas and he performed certain austerities, some fasting and some different, different austerities. And this personality appeared before him, took his, his, his books, went through it, and gave his authority and said, it's perfect, publish it. So we. We may not know these things, but there are sages, there are yogis, there are people who have lived more than a thousand years, two thousand years, three thousand years, and you can find them in the Himalayas. So this knowledge is still there, intact. Papa, please wait. You are saying that, like when we splitted or when we detached. Yes. Uh, everybody went with a kind of knowledge. Yes. And these people went with totality of the knowledge. Yes. And that's why the, these, all these people are there. Yes. So what would we come to? Uh, so in to Africa, Africa we took away the rituals. There is, <laughs> there is an aspect of the scripture which <laughs> is called tantrics. It is just rituals. So Africa, we took away the rituals of the Vedic literature. We did not take the, the deep knowledge you may find some amount of it in the Kabbalahs. You may find some amount of it in the Egyptians' writings. But that is very limited also. But if you want the totality of the 108 Upanishads, the 18 Puranas, the Mahabharat, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and many more, you can find all of this in India. So it's, it's, it's not that they, it's, it's an Asian something that they've been able to keep or maintain, but, but naturally, that kind of knowledge fell with them. Is that what you are saying, please? Well, that, you see, we must also accept that India is the spiritual capital of the world. We must accept that. Why? Because the practice of spiritualism if you talk of uh, yoga, you talk of the mysticism, it is said that there are eight perfections of mysticism. 
You can find all of these things in India. You can find them. That's why I'm saying that is it because like they kept it? Is is it like is it something Asian, something that splitted or spliced everywhere? But they have been able to hold it, keep it, and then maybe vibrate on it or maybe practice and pass it through generation to exactly. generation. And we didn't do that. Uh huh. The the issue is. Knowledge has to be handed from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. That system is maintained in India. So the rituals we inherited or we came with, yes. do we still have it or? We, we have lost much of it even because there is, no, there is no system by which it is transferred from generation to generation. I'll just give one example. Okay, please do so. My father had a friend. And this friend, he is, he is an experienced undertaker. They bury the dead. And sometimes they have challenges in burying people because the system of burial is a bit queer. They dig the grave in a round manner. They go deep, six feet deep, and they make a room for the dead, like a bed. They carve a bed in there in my area up north. So the person who does the undertaking, he would go inside the grave and they would lower the body down to the person in the grave and he would put him to rest. If he is, if he is a male, he, he's, he lies facing the east, meaning that day has broken. You are the caretaker of the family. You must get up and work. If it is a female, the f his face is east and west, meaning that night is coming. You must get ready to take care of the family. So, and there are certain ceremonies they will perform, put you to rest, all that. Then the undertaker will now come out, and then they will cover the entrance with a stone and cover it with mud and cement and whatever. So sometimes they face some challenges in there. After you set the person down to, to rest, when you want to come out, you will feel somebody touching you. So if it happens like that, you have to go back and reset the, the dead body properly. It means you have not done that properly. If it happens two or three times, it means there's a challenge. And so if you are not an experienced undertaker, you announce to the people outside, there's a challenge inside. And they will allow an experienced person to come in, and you who has no experience will go out. Then that experienced person will order them to close the grave. They will seal it. Meanwhile, he's in the grave. They will seal it. Then by the time you get to the house, he's already at home. Hmm. There was a man, a friend to my father. I know him very well. This man has died. He has passed away with that knowledge. He has never transferred to anybody. Hmm. He will, you, you, he will bury himself with the dead body, the dead body. and get home Before with you get his to the physical house, body. He's already waiting for you there. And he took it away. He took it away. Oh, Africa. So there is no tradition, there is no system, there is no process by which knowledge can be transferred. So can we start some, is there something we can well, do now? Yes, if you want to start. It means you have to start doing some research, gathering knowledge, those who are still alive, who have this information. And, but another issue is that because people don't like to share this knowledge also, we are a little bit greedy, selfish. <laughs> So they may not even want to share this knowledge with you if you try to research. That is the issue. Yes. But in India, it's different. They accept disciples, they teach them, they train them, they pass the knowledge they, because they don't want the knowledge to be to lost. To die. There, there is a man here who was here in Akosumu. My grandfather has a house. And in that house, no female can go into that house. I was the only female child that this old man would take into the house. Wow. He has three wives. He's built a house for all of them. 
and then has a bigger house for himself. So when you give birth to a male child, he goes to that bigger house. Female children stays with their mothers. With their mothers. I was the only female child that the man was sleeping with in his room, in that big house. And he, there is a man he visits and he will go with me. The man is in Akosumu here. He has a big prayer camp. That time when I was young, there is always fire. The fire will never go quench. As the fire is going, that there are people who run shift. They will put more fire in it. This man can go and pick something from Kumasi and come back in two minutes. It's not dream. Oh. Physically, the, yes. the only thing they do in that prayer camp is just fire. All the time, the fire is, he can go anywhere. He can do something and you will see plane has come there and he will move. In Ghana here, the man died. The With place the is there now. And the last time I was like, go, let me go. And the place is just there. The houses, all the rooms are there, big. The camp is there, but they are not oper operating. He died. The man just died like that. Yeah, so that's the difference. The difference so is that... So what can we do now? Do you have anything in mind that you feel if we should start now, we are able to keep it or uh, revive the bit that we came with? This selfishness, hatred and greed, I just don't know. Is there well, anything you think we can well, do? Well, you can start some research. So you may meet some people who may be willing to share the knowledge. And w once you start gathering that knowledge, there will be a, a repertoire. There will be um, a library of such knowledge for the future generations. But that also means that um, one must, you see, one must be ready to also learn and undergo the training because knowledge alone is not enough. You must. Take we don't have time for learning. <laughs> we want money. We are in a hurry. <laughs> What's learning? <laughs> learning, okay. Yeah, that's it. So what? Uh, so this thing that we've lost, do you think it has cost us as black people? Why not? It has cost us. You see, um, every culture utilizes the knowledge inherited from development. Why is it that Africans, our culture has no value to us? There's no value to us. Somebody will say it's because you are doing it for Indians, you didn't do it for us. So the issue is that it was not properly handed over, it was not properly taught, and so. Okay, so now that you are well endowed uh, in these people's worship or practices, let me put it like that, practices, is it... It, would it work if you bring that practices here or we just need to research about our own, the path that we got and assume it so it can work and help the land? Well, what I would say is that, you see, the essence of the scriptures, the essence of spirituality is what we are presenting. So, uh, as I said, the African continent, when it's separated from the main continent or the main landmass, took away rit rit rituals and rituality. But the essence is, who am I? Where do I come from? Who is God? What is my relationship with him? Because that is what will take us out of this world and take us back to the spiritual kingdom. Rituals may help us to achieve certain things. Rituals may help us to, 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 to perform some feats. But the essence of life, knowing thyself, going back to Godhead, is the most important. And that is what we are offering to the world. Exactly. Looking at you, like you know a lot. So looking at Africans, your own mind and ideas, how many percentage do you think has gained their consciousness, consciousness or known themselves? Well, I, it would be difficult for me to say, mm -hmm. but definitely there are some Africans who have pursued spiritual knowledge and they have reached certain heights in spiritual development. And um, we can say 
they have achieved what they are supposed to achieve as human beings. But the number is small. That's the issue. Yeah. Very because small. that's the issue. So, so um, if we should achieve a lot of this spiritual knowledge, how best can it help the continent? Yes. You're already doing that. This your platform is a platform of education. You are every day putting out this knowledge. So those who are fortunate, they will link up with this platform and they will learn some things. You see, the more we understand who we are and the more we operate on that platform, the more we'll be in harmony with nature hmm. and the more we'll be in harmony with God and the more things would blossom. But without that knowledge, we are just groping the darkness. So knowledge is light and it is, it is light that we show the way. So we need to spread this knowledge more and more and more. And that is what you are doing. Hmm. God help us all. Thank you for coming. We appreciate you. You are watching the biggest, the largest, the highest, the greatest African spiritual platform. Today's topic is huge and I want us to get in there. Is there heaven? Is there a place like that? And why would God create that heaven for his own children? And what hell and heaven? And what qualification take us to hell or heaven? That's your topic. Yes. Please take us through. Thank you. Um, we are living in a universe. The universe is structured. The universe is divided. Just as in Accra, we have, we have a high class area and a low class area. We have the prison house and we have a place of freedom. So we are just mimicking, we are just imitating the structure in the universe. The universe is so structured that we have the higher planetary systems. It's called Swagalok, the higher planetary systems where the angels and the higher beings, they live. We have the middle planetary system where we human beings, we live. And we have the lower planetary system where sinful people live. So the universe is divided into three categories. Hmm. A higher planetary system called the Swagalok, the middle planetary system called the Bhuva Mandala, and the lower planetary system called the Patalalok, the hellish planets. So there is a qualification to be in each of these places. Mm. Those who live in the heavens, they are in the mode of goodness. In fact, there are three qualities in this world. The quality of goodness, the quality of passion, and the quality of ignorance. Mm. Those who are in the quality of goodness, they, they, are, they have knowledge, they are enlightened, and they do things in a better way. Such people, when they die, they are promoted to heaven. Mm. Actually, heaven is not the kingdom of God. Hey. Heaven is a place to reward those who do good. So anybody can go to heaven. It doesn't matter whether you go to church or you don't go to church. It doesn't matter whether you believe in God or you don't believe in God. If you do good in this world, you become a candidate for heaven. So the good things we are doing will give us the opportunity to go to heaven and enjoy the credit. It's like you save money in the bank. It is your credit. It is for you. Anytime you can always go and draw a check. So the good things we do in this world is called punya karma, pious activities. Any piety we perform will take us to heaven. 
Similarly, any sinful activity we perform will take us to hell. Just as there are millions of heavens, the heavens are uncountable. It is not that there is only one heaven. They are uncountable because we all have different categories of credits. Heaven does not mean that we are all in one place. No, we have different degrees of credit. So we have to be placed in different situations. Similarly, there are millions of hells. There is not, hell is not just one place. If hell is one place, then it is not fair. Now somebody steals a penny, goes to the same hell, and somebody st steals a million dollar, he goes to the same hell. Or somebody slaps somebody, he goes to the same hell. And, and some, they goes to the same prison. And somebody kills age. somebody, he goes to the same hell. <laughs> <laughs> it is not fair. There are many hells corresponding to the many different types of sins we, we commit. In fact, the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Bhagavad Purana identifies 28 major hells. 28 major hells. And they correspond to the 28 major sins that we commit in this world. Which is? Name a few. Killing of animals. This Killing is, of animals. Yes, slaughtering mm. animals. Is yeah, a very sin. day. I'm very happy by a day. Kill of animals <laughs> is a sin. Stealing okay. people's properties is a sin. Oh, that one we Lying know. is a sin. We know. And so many. They are killing of animals. We yes. don't agree. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching the biggest and the largest. So, Father, in this case, who created those hells and why? Yes. It's just like asking you who created a prison house in Isawam. It's the government. The government built the, 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 the prisons because for, he for, knows. For thieves. That there are some people who break the laws, the laws of the country, and they have to be separated from the good citizens. So it is part of administration that you must have a place for the crooked. So when God was creating this material world, he knew. When it, God was creating the, the creation, he knew that there, was some, there would be some people, some souls, that would err, that would deviate. And so, therefore, there must be a place for them. So the hell is created for those souls who do not want to follow the laws of God. Hmm. So if we don't follow the laws of God, immediately we qualify to go to hell. That's the qualification. That's the and qualification. when we go to hell, what happened there? And as I said, there are 28 major hells. And in each of these hells, there's a different type of punishment. Hmm. And if you have committed all the different types of sins, you will have to visit all the different types of hells. You are sentenced for a period of time to pay for a particular type of activity. And when you finish, you are sent to another hell to pay for that particular type of sin. So there are some people, they are still visiting the different hells to pay for the different things they've done. And after? Well, after you have finished that, it takes a long time you are brought back to the Earth planet. In fact, the Earth planet is like the middle planetary system. We are in between. We are in between the heavens and the hell. So it, no fire will burn you? There is fire. Why so not? if the fire burns you, how do I come but back? But the fire does not destroy your subtle body. We have to understand that we have a physical body, we have a subtle body, and we have a spiritual body. We have three bodies in one. The physical, which we drop at the time of death, but the mind, intelligence, and ego cannot be destroyed by fire or destroyed by any uh, physical things. So that is what you take to hell. And even though you will feel the pain of the fire, but you don't die. Punishment. It's punishment. You are watching the biggest so punishment, pa pa pa. Punishment. And when you go to hell, and uh, heaven. heaven. So, as I mentioned, those who perform pi pious activities, those who are in the mode of goodness, they are entitled to heaven. And uh, in heaven also, there are many, many t millions of heavens. It's not just one place. 
the millions of heavens. And that place too. Just as Christ said, in my Father's kingdom, there are many mansions. Mm -hmm. so, so when you get there too. So when you go to heaven, there are also different, different situations, different degrees of enjoyment, different degrees, different lifespans. So according to your degree of piety in this world, you are promoted to a particular heaven. In some heaven, you live for 10,000 years. In some heaven, you live for 100,000 years. In some heaven, you live for a million years. In some heaven, you live for three trillion years. So according to your piety, you are promoted to a particular heaven. And the, 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 the enjoyment in each heaven varies also. The longer you are living, the more you enjoy. Hey, so it could it be that that heaven is what Christians and Muslims are talking about, but we get confused about it. Maybe uh, Muslims are going to a particular one, and Christians are also going to a particular one. Could that, could that be the case? See, even Christ himself made it very clear. He said, in the beginning, God created heaven and earth. God created heaven and earth. So where was God when he was creating heaven and earth? Mm -hmm. And then again, Christ said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my Father's kingdom shall remain. So it means that the kingdom of God is not heaven, it's not earth. It is not. So heaven is not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is separate. The kingdom of God is spiritual. We call it Goloka Vrindavan or Vaikunta. And who are those going there? Those who are devotees of the Lord. Those who have become purified. Where do we find those people? Where are they? They are there. Where? They are on this planet. Where? Such as? <laughs> are, they, are they in a particular group of... I mean, we want to know. Or individuals. No, they, can be mean, found, they, they can be found in a, every religion. Is it God that will pick them? Or is it is no, a they, kind? They are, they are lovers of God. Anyone who is a lover of God. Anyone who... who who has given up the love for this world. Christ said, love not the this world or the things of this world. Anyone who loves this world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. Christ said that in the Bible. Mm. Yes. So those who are lovers of the Supreme, who are lovers of God, they enter the Vaikuntha planet. They enter the spiritual world. And they are there. You can find some in the Hare Krishna movement. You can find some in the in Christendom. You can find some among Muslims. So when you go there, what happens? That is actually our home. You won't come back again. You don't come back here. You oh. don't need to enter this, this place of bad, dead disease. Oh, I want to go there. That is where we all want to go. <laughs> <laughs> we all want to go back home, back to Godhead. Hmm. That is our destination. That is our origin. And that is where everybody should so go. So what and what do you tell us to do? Give us five um, structures or five um, efforts we can put in to get through to this place. So we don't come back here again. Good. And that is what we are presenting. If you want to go back to the spiritual world, never to come back to this material world, then you must become a lover of God. And to become a lover of God, you must give up violence. In fact, we have principles. They are called the golden principles of freedom. These principles of freedom are very important. God is love. God is compassion. God is truth. God is purity. We must practice these things. So in order to, uh, to, to become spiritually inclined, to become lovers of God, we say you must follow these golden principles of, of religion. Uh, and this means practicing compassion, and to practice compassion means you have to give up violence of all sorts. And that is why the Hare Krishnas, we don't eat meat. We don't kill animals because we consider the animals are also as the children of God also. We sometimes think the animals don't have soul. That is not true. That is our understanding. They behave the same way we behave also. They, they eat, they sleep, they mate, and they defend themselves. And we do the same thing. We may do our own in a very sophisticated way, but it boils down to the same thing. So therefore, one has to give up violence. But, but they animals, some of them chew some of them. So yes. how, why can't we also eat them? Yes, an interesting, interesting question. You see, animals follow their nature. Animals are created, a goat would never eat meat because he's created to eat Vegetables. 
That is his nature. A lion will not eat grass because his nature is to eat flesh. Mm, so we too. But for us, we are not created to eat meat. Those that eat meat, they eat it raw. And we cannot eat it you raw. You can eat it raw. The lion doesn't need to cook his meat. It doesn't need to add salt and so pepper. So if you can eat it raw, it's okay. You can do it. We but if you can do it, <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> if you can do it, you most definitely kill the animal before you eat. It's the same killing. Well, the, but the fact remains that there are, there are, there are, there are nature dictates to them what to do. For us, our, our diet is not meat. Our diet, even from the scriptural point of view, it is not meat. Our diet is fruit, vegetables, grains, and so on, not flesh. Because if you compare, if you compare scientifically the digestive system of the human being with that of the herbivorous animal, those animals that eat vegetables, you see that they're very similar. And if you compare the digestive system of the human being to that of the carnivorous animal, those animals that eat flesh, you see a big difference. The carnivorous animals, their intestine, their digestive tract is mm -hmm. three times the size of their body. The herbivorous animals is 21 times the, the size of the body. And human beings have that kind of length of digestive system. Because the vegetables, the herbs, they don't produce toxic waste during the digestion. Meat produces toxic waste. Most of the cancer and the diseases we experience in this world is coming from these toxic things from meat. And because we don't have that short digestive system to, to remove it immediately, it, will it becomes stay there for long. It stays there for long and becomes a cause of disease. So naturally speaking, human beings are not meant to eat meat. Mm. But we have we we, we love meat, it. Including and we chicken. And we, 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 we force <laughs> ourselves to eat it. Including chicken. So in order to develop love of God, you must give up animal flesh. Okay, you must give up animal flesh. Yeah. Now, let me ask this important question. You are talking about soul going to heaven and hell. Yep. And you first explain, who distributes souls into this earth? How does souls come here? Yes, souls are part and parcel of God. In fact, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says... Uh, uh, he says, all souls are eternally part and parcel of me. So the soul emanates from God. So there are more souls in the spiritual world. It is said that the spiritual world is three quarters of the creation of God. And the material creation is one quarter of the creation of God. So there are more souls, more perfected souls in the spiritual world than the material world. Mm. You those who are asking that if it's reincarnation, why do we keep increasing? That's your answer. Yeah. So, uh, so every soul is actually part and person of God. We are all one family. It's called Vasudevam Kutumbam. We are all one family. Every living being comes from one source. And that is God. Because you have a soul. I have a soul. The goat has a soul. The fowl has a soul. God is the creator of the universe. Yes. So, so everything emanates from him. So And he is full of love. That's right. So, so we must demonstrate that love. So then we qualify to go so back. So why home. won't he forgive those who do not keep his uh, will? Somebody with full of love. Why would he create hell for people? Yes. It actually... It is we who have created a hell by our activities. God would not like to create a hell, but he must have a place to check those who want to disobey his orders. So where would be his love if he, if he throw his own children there? Look, it is it's like if you tell your child not to put his hand inside the fire, and he put his hand inside the fire, it is not you who have put, him, put his hand inside the fire. It is he who decided to put the hand inside. So when I put uh, when we put our hands inside the fire, would he come and dress the wound for us? Well, when <laughs> you put your hand inside the fire, you will learn a lesson. 
you know that it burns next time you won't put your and hand in we have to be in the lesson so, for many so this years. material creation is a learning ground hell is a learning ground whatever we're experiencing here is a learning ground it's a school and so as we go through the pain we learn to behave properly we learn to behave properly so give us um, some qualifications five qualifications that will take you to heaven and five qualifications that will take you to hell yeah i already mentioned that um First, I said, to go back to the spiritual well, we must practice nonviolence. We must practice purity of, of life. We must, uh, we must, um, so it's like in our Hare Krishna, we don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't eat meat because we want to practice compassion, nonviolence. We don't engage in sex outside of marriage because we want to practice purity. We don't drink alcohol or smoke cigarettes or any hard drugs because we want to practice austerity. And we don't, we don't, um, we, don't uh, uh, we don't gamble because we want to practice truthfulness. So these principles are very essential in going back to the spiritual world. So anybody who wants to go back to the spiritual world must practice these four principles. And mm. the then you will not get anybody. Why not? People are practicing. Uh, people are practicing, but do you know how many people we are in the world? How many are you practicing this difficult issue? And that is why Christ said the path that leads to God is very, very narrow, narrow. and very few people walk on it. So they intentionally the, made that path the, narrow. The path that leads so to hell, we hell is very broad, and many people They are made it there. broad. So why won't we walk there? You have to choose. It's a choice, a matter of choice. The narrow place <laughs> is full up. <laughs> <laughs> You are watching the <laughs> biggest. He made that th that place narrow. So why won't want why would narrow a, a smaller group of people will not practice this? No, in other You've words, you've made the place it's, narrow. It's not narrow. Or it's elastic. It's, it's elastic. It's <laughs> unlimited. <laughs> it can take as many people as possible. It can take the whole world. There. But we decided to make we the other place decided. bigger. We want. We choose the easy path, and so the easy path. It's broad. But seriously, this thing is not actually difficult. Why? What makes it difficult for us as people? It's Why? Not, it's not difficult. It's just that um, we have no knowledge. Ignorance is our disease. Mm. Avidya. Ignorance is our disease. So long as we are ignorant, we would always act irresponsibly. But as soon as we gain some knowledge and we understand our duty, we understand our nature, we we'll act differently. So, Are we understanding so knowledge, the knowledge? Knowledge is the key. And that is what you are doing, giving hmm. knowledge. People should learn to understand who am I, where do I come from, what is my duty, and follow that knowledge. Is it easy? It's not easy. What is easy to go to school, to graduate, become a PhD? Everything it's not is easy. not easy. Nothing eating, is easy. Even eating is eating not, is not easy. easy. Sleeping is not easy. So you must make the effort. Must make the effort. Yes. You are watching the biggest and the largest. You must make the effort. So people are watching us. Advice us three different things people should do that will help or encourage them to break, uh, yes. go beyond what you just said. Okay. You see, um, um, uh, no sex be no, outside marriage. Outside marriage. This is good. It will even bring peace. That's right. Uh, don't eat animal meat for your own. The gout and all the sickness right. will be and what? And then uh, no alcoholism. No. No alcoholism. Drops. It's for your own health. Health. And what? And then no gambling. Gambling. Hey, gambling. No, is it going to be easy? Yeah, but it makes you untruthful. Anybody who is a gambler can, can never speak the truth. But is the life itself not gambling? Well, that's, that, that's why we should turn our face towards God. When you turn your face towards God, it's no more gambling. But if you, are not, if you don't turn your face towards God, your life is a complete gamble. Exactly. So these four things, do you have antidote for this, for these four things? The antidote is associate with devotees, call the names of God every day. That's why the Bible says from the rising of the sun to its setting, one should call on the names of God. When we call the names of God, we are associated with God. We can derive some spiritual energy that will help us to follow these rules and regulations. Actually, on our own, we don't have the strength. But if we practice calling the names of God, all the scriptures recommend they're calling the names of God. 
from the Holy Quran, from the Bible, from the Torah, from the Bhagavad Gita, from the Shemad Bhagavatam, from all the scriptures, they all recommend that on daily basis, we should call the names of God. By calling the names of God, one associates with God, one develops spiritually, one becomes spiritually inclined, and one can follow these rules and regulations. One can follow these rules and regulations. What is the name of God? God has unlimited names, but it is said that God has primary names and secondary names. We want to know them from here. We are <laughs> going to mention it, so yeah, tell us. Primary names are the names that relate to God's pastimes, his activities in the spiritual world. Which is? We have Govinda, we have Krishna, we have Gopala, we have uh, Mukunda. There are many, thousands of names are there. How do I mention these names? Well, you have to learn. And then we also have the primary, the secondary names as when you say God is the creator, God is almighty, God is the super soul. These are described as, as secondary names because they relate to the creation. But the activities of God in the spiritual world give rise to his primary names. And those primary names, they have more efficacy. They have more potency when you call on these primary names. It will help you more mm. in your spiritual development. They will help you more. That is um, from uh, the Prabhu with grace, the name grace in addition. <laughs> you are watching the biggest and the largest. I don't know what you have to tell Africans and where we can start this whole thing from. But I'm giving you five minutes to talk to everybody, including Africans, but hit uh, more on Africans. We need to, I uh, mean, gain our consciousness and liberate our continent. Yes, Africa, we are a blessed continent, no doubt about it, because the whole world depends on Africa for its resources. Without Africa, there is no world. Hmm. Unfortunately, we are enslaved, mentally enslaved. And until we break away from this mental slavery, we can't go anywhere. Hmm. So what, is, what, is, what is the slavery thing about? The slavery thing is that we don't have the knowledge that will enlighten us, that will guide us, that will lead us out of this situation. Hmm. We have been made to think that the African is inferior. We have been made to think that everything African is bad. This is mental slavery. Oh. And until we get out of this situation, Hmm. Are we getting out one day? Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so your last words and the advice you have for the yes. public and if there are any numbers you would want to give and all that. Yes, uh, so our advice to the public is that we should lead morally upright lives. We should try to follow the laws of God. We should try to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead. We should know that life is temporary. It doesn't matter which position you occupy. It's, it's a flash in eternity. Even if you live for thousands of years, it's still a flash in eternity. But if you utilize this short, brief life in pursuing spiritual knowledge, at the end of the day, you'll be very happy because you would have understood who you are, where you have come from, and where you are going from here. Hmm. It is very essential. If we don't know our identity, if we don't know who we are, if we think we are this physical body, this physical body will fall apart. There is no guarantee how long this body is going to last. It is born, it grows old, it grows sick, and it falls off. But we go on, life does not end with death. Nor does life begins with birth. The soul is eternally existing because it's part and parcel of the Supreme. But now we are identified with the external body and we think that is our identity. No, we are not. Our identity is spiritual and therefore we should practice calling the names of God, practice following the laws of God, practice studying the scripture, practice trying to serve others 
and this will bring us closer and closer to our creator. It will bring us closer and closer to our creator. I wish we will all work towards this and get to where we belong to and leave this uh, place, uh, this dumping place. It's the struggle, the pain, the troubles, but we still want to be, I don't understand. It's because we are not working on ourselves. So, so God help us all. Papa, thank you so much. You know how much we appreciate you on this set. Thank you so much for your time. You've been here since morning. We do appreciate you. Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you so much for watching Revelations. Don't let this um, um, effort be in vain. I am not preaching any fraternity to you. I'm preaching yourself to you. When you have yourself, you are able to make decisions that will benefit yourself. Eat according to your strength. Buy according to your pocket and cut your coat according to your size. You are able to make this decision when you know yourself, then you know your size. Thank you so much for watching and thank you so much for gaining your consciousness for me. Thank you so much. Shalom. Peace.